So I'm Alistair Florence, I'm the Director for the Centre for Continuous Manufacturing and Crystallisation uh, based at the University of Strathclyde. Uh, we are largely concerned with developing new manufacturing approaches for pharmaceuticals and other high value chemical products. We focus on uh, small molecule medicines, so chemicals, aspirin, ibuprofen, paracetamol, but many of the current medicines at the moment are these small chemical entities, so manufactured using synthetic chemical processes um, and delivered, uh, our focus has particularly been on solid oral dosage forms, so things that you would take as a tablet. Over the, the last year within our centre, there's been certainly a, a significant focus on pooling a number of technologies together to demonstrate what we, we refer to as workflows. So a systematic approach to gather information about the physical properties of a system, to characterise the manufacturing platforms that we have, and to use that information to design individual stages in the manufacture. We have a particular focus on crystallisation because of the importance uh, in purifying uh, the chemicals uh, that, that are used in medicines, uh, in controlling their properties, so the stability of them. So if you make them in December, it is the same drug compound in the tablet the following December and even up to five uh, years or more after that. So crystallisation is hugely important, but it's poorly understood. Um, so making crystals, making them consistently so the performance of the medicine in the patient is consistent, safe and effective uh, is, a, is a key objective. We may want to control particle size so that you can inhale the drug and get a very direct effect to treat uh, the lungs or to avoid systemic exposure of drug uh, to manage side effects. Um, you may start to look at the manufacturing process differently because of these technologies. Continuous manufacturing, rather than doing everything in one pot and, and watching the system change over time, allows you to actually separate out those changes in space. And so there are some advantages of that. Um, one being that you can actually control, say, the crystallisation step in a smaller volume with greater uh, accuracy and perhaps do different things. So can we introduce excipient earlier on in the process and actually fundamentally change the way that we would, we would manufacture our medicines. We were very fortunate uh, in the early days in having uh, three companies, GSK, AstraZeneca and Novartis, who were willing to work with the academic community, this collaborative, we have seven universities in our partnership. Um, but to, to come together and work pre-competitively. And five, six years ago, that, that was really quite innovative for pharmaceutical industry in particular. Um, so over the last five years, I think in terms of impacts, we've seen technologies taken up by some of these companies. Uh, we've brought new technology companies, not just end users, but technology manufacturers into this partnership. Um, and that's helping inform them and where there is a demand for solutions um, and also us to gain access to cutting-edge technologies. So I think as we look forward uh, we are hoping to deliver across a number of areas in research, fundamental understanding and technologies and know-how that industry can exploit uh, to manufacture medicines more efficiently uh, and get medicines to market more quickly. But you have to take a longer view and that's what EPSRC is doing through the, the future manufacturing hubs.